Hello and welcome everyone. This is Miranda's Crafter and I am super excited that you joined me today. I have been thinking for the last three or four days about making this video and I am really glad that everybody in the YouTube com community that makes Ark Survival Ascended content made the same exact video I wanted to make. <laughs> So I've been thinking for the last couple of days how I would like to make where is some of the good base spots in Ark Survival Ascended. And then today while I was at work, I was like, yes, I can't wait to get home to finally make that video I've been planning for the last couple of days. And then I watched my YouTube feed and every, so many people that I follow that make Ark content all released best base spots in Ark Survival Ascended video today. So I'm like, <sighs> yeah. But I'm going to do it anyway because from what I saw from their content, they all have about the same mindset and they all keep taking you to the same tired locations. And uh, yeah, Herbivore Island and Hidden Lake and, you know, those are all wonderful spots. But those are all boring spots that people have been building in for so many years that let's look outside the box and look at some different type of areas based on utility and not really so much of, you know, where's a peaceful spot that I can grow all my dinos and not get attacked. Um, let's not think that way. Let's think about experiencing the game in a place where the game is going to come at you and punch you in the face because that's when Ark is at its funnest, kind of. You know what I mean? So, let's fire up those muscles. You see, I got some big muscles. And let's think about some different type of locations. So, firstly, one of the things that I wanted to think about <clears throat> when thinking about a base location that's important to me, super important to me, is um, access to water. Because I don't know how you play, but I know that whenever I play ARC, I usually always need to set me up a land base, and then I always gravitate to wanting to play in the water as well. So I've started to get to the place to where when I look for a base location, I look for something that has a good, nice, solid foundation to be able to build some land stuff. But then also something, you know, that has some good water access as well, too. 546 Raptor. Holy crap, where did you come from? But... You know, like this location, and I, and yes, I realize I get it before you burn me up in the comments. On an official server, you're not going to be able to place this many water platforms. I get that. But you are going to be able to place four, and four can take up a pretty good footprint. Uh, especially in an area like this, where you can have a little bit of land access and then plop down four water platforms and secure you some of the shore. To where you can then go down into the water and do some building in the water. Like me right here, I've figured out a way to put my platforms down, make me some walling around the base, and then by creative placing can do like gates under the water to where I can use this area as like a water pen to be able to breathe it, breed in. You can see that I've kind of placed it to where the deepest point of the trench is like right under the middle of my base so that I can swim my big dinos through here and kind of move them around. Breed sharks, breed bazzies, whatever, you know, type of thing. And then have them come out the door and voila, I'm in the ocean. So you can see I've kind of placed that to where, you know, a water pen is a really doable thing and for me that's super important because I always want to raise water dinos because I love playing around in the ocean. A lot of people don't want to go in the ocean and that's fine but if you do then think along the lines of having something like this to where you can have a little bit of shore, a little bit of water, and some area to put down some platforms and create water pens and you know build your base up. I think this beach right here, right down below the Red Obelisk, is a really prime location. 
because it has access obviously close to an obelisk. Um, it has access to the water and it, you know, a, a pretty good location where you can actually build on the land and into the water just a little bit to where you can, you know, make you a pen easier. And then it also has access to a lot of activity. You know, there's a lot of dinos going on. Golly, look, there's two, two uh, alphas right there, an alpha raptor and an alpha carno. But, I mean, there's a lot of good stuff going on here. There's a lot of resources nearby. There's a lot of flat land you can build on. Uh, so at the beginning of the game, I would probably do my note run to about 60-ish. And then I would start heading this direction if I was interested in making a base like this. Because I'd plop down some pillars right here along this beach. Capture me some of this space. And then start thinking about building out into the water and you know, seeing what I could do. Now on an unofficial server, this is going to be totally doable <coughs> for you to be able to, to build over here by the obelisk like this. Now, for an official server, I'm not really sure just how close you're going to be able to build. <laughs> this is my massive base loading in. How close you're going to be able to build near the obelisk. So I'm not sure if you're going to be able to place pillars and stuff down right here. But that's just something we're going to have to figure out. Because I think a location like this really has potential for an, a very utilitarian base to where you can do land content and water content. So that's something I'm always really looking for. Same thing about this island that's right beside the Red Ob. You know, you could build off this backside and have you a good looking base right here that has water access and then also has access to the obelisk. Same thing over here with this island. You could do you some land base into the water type stuff and come up with a really good, you know, really good base situation here. Uh, this land is good. It has a deep drop off into the water to where you could make you a good water pen. And then, you know, the coastlines are good building spots just in general uh, for a lot of different types of people. For people that really don't know how to play the game very well, these are one of the starting spawn-in spots right here. These are good locations to build a base because, as you can see, most of the stuff that's running around over here is pretty peaceful. Um, in the beginning, you start off in an area kind of like this, and, I mean, you know, you can see this is pretty a pretty peaceful location. You'll recognize this spot right here is one of these spots that they made their trailer at. You know, where they show the survivor spawning in on the beach and then a Bronto walking by. Yeah, so this is a good starter location area to think about building in. Um, something like this little rock feature in the water you could build a pen around or, you know, just all kinds of neat stuff. You could take uh, some platforms and pin off this a uh, ditch right here in the water and make you an effective little nice little water water pen that the walls of the environment kind of help you build the walls of the pen you can see that I can just kind of scoot through here and boom I'm out into the ocean so yeah keep those kind of things in mind when you're thinking about locations to build in if you want to build along the shoreline uh, you want to have water access those are all good types of base locations to think about of course, like I said, everybody always wants to take you to what's called Herbivore Island in these base type videos. Um, they want to show you this location right here, which is called Herbivore Island. One of the reasons why it's a very popular base location is because it's very peaceful. There's nothing that spawns here. Let me kind of get the map where you can see it. Um, it's like 80, 80, 80, 82, 82, something like that one of the reasons why it's such a good, uh, popular place to spawn is because there's nothing aggressive that spawns here everything that spawns here is plant eaters nice to you won't hurt you unless you hurt it first uh, there are a lot of brontos here so you know one misstep with a harvesting tool and you could find yourself getting wrecked uh, your base getting wrecked but all in all, it's a pretty peaceful place. There's lots of good resources. There's lots of good metal nodes. And, you know, if you build just right, you'll keep the metal nodes spawning to where you can continually farm them. There's a bunch back here. 
Uh, I like when I built here once before, I built in this bowl and it was, you know, cleared out and it's a very interesting spot to build. So yeah, that's Herbivore Island. It has a water access part to it to where you can have like your own little bay and then, you know, like right here is where you'd probably try to gate it off to keep the megalodons and stuff like that from swimming up in there and killing your stuff you're trying to breed. I think the water is deep enough to where you could breed some some decent sized dinos in here. Maybe a few mosasaurs or a lot of sharks or, you know, just whatever. And just kind of wall it off right there and wall it off right here. And then you'd be golden. Okay, so now let's think about the next spot that I had in mind. Now on to one of the other locations that I think is really neat as far as a good base location. And that is up in the snow biome, up in the snow area. Um, you come along the coastline right here. You can see the red ob is down there. And the fog is so bad you can't see it. Blue ob is right up there. But you have this little bowl-shaped depression. And this is a really neat place to build. You've got a lot of room to spread out. There's a lot of good resources. There's a lot of good dinos here. And it's just kind of protected once you start building in this area a lot of this stuff will quit spawning and you won't have so many wolves and stuff like that spawn in here and then you can put like some spiked walls up around this ledge to keep stuff from falling in on you and then this makes a pretty good location to kind of build some neat structures you've got access to a lot of resources in this area because up here in the winter biome area you have a lot of obsidian you have a lot of metal rich metal nodes too no joking around a uh, lot of metal a lot of wood a lot of fiber a lot of oil uh, a lot of silica pearls are in this area as well and there's just lots of good stuff to be able to go get just right near you so it's a very good location to think about one that allows you to spread out in and it's just fun all the way around. It's just a fun location. You will probably have to build up your fort a little bit. Put a few points into fort to be able to survive here. Or, you know, wear some fur or something like that. But put you down some stoves, some fireplaces, things like that to keep you warm. But that's a really interesting base location. Another location that I find to be real fun is this island right here. Uh, it's just a neat little place to build. It's got a neat little area for you to do a water pen access into the water. Boom, you come out, you're in the ocean. And then you've got another one over here to this side. A smaller little rocket tube out into the water. You know, it's kind of neat. What am I doing? I don't know. But, and then a lot of oil here, penguins spawn here. Uh, you can get you some megalodons up in your water area here and raise them or, you know, just anything. And I think this is just a really neat location. You can build up high or down low. It's whatever you feel like doing. Another kind of good location in this area is another little island like this. You can see you've got lots of penguins on this island to be able to harvest for polymer oil you got a lot of flat spot you can build on it doesn't look like it but there's a lot of spot here to build on and it's more room than you think it's deceiving about how much room you've got here another location that i've had a lot of fun with that i thought was a super good location uh was yeah right over here this location right here is crazy looking because there's a lot going on here <laughs> <laughs> but once you clear this out, this little strip of land right here is a super fun location because you can wall it off right here to where nothing can get to you. Just cut this whole little section off right here straight across and nothing can really get to you. And then you've got this whole little, uh, I don't know what this is called, a little protrusion of land to build on. And, and it's got every resource you need, like right here. You've got rich metal, you've got obsidian, you've got stone, you've got crystal, you've got wood, you've got fiber, you've got that. You've got everything you need right here. 
Plus, you've got tons of dinos to harvest. You've got Megatherium. You've got Udys. You've got Dadons. You've got a, a lot of your high-level dinos that you're going to want to get are going to be like right around this area. So it's really a neat place to think about being uh, mammoths. And one of the cool things about this area is there's also one of the caves. One of the artifacts caves is right here. So it's like right next to you, right down this path that you could just walk right down and go in and get your artifact for one of the boss fights. And yeah, really cool. And Blue Ob is just right there, you know, not too far away. You wouldn't really have to go on metal runs because all you got to do is just walk out your door and do metal runs because there's metal laying everywhere here. And this area right here is really cool too because an ob uh, supply drop hits right here. So you can have your own personal supply drop, which is usually pretty high in rarity, yellow, red, and purple most of the time. So yeah, that's kind of some of my favorite places in the winter biome area. Um, I'm sure there's a lot of other good places in the winter biome. Like this area has been known to be really good for base building on this little island right here. Uh, because on this island right here, you lose your freezing debuff and you're still in the, the winter biome. So you can still take advantage of all the good resources and high level dinos. But you can survive on this little patch of grass a lot better because you lose your freezing debuff. So yeah, that's some of the cool areas around the winter biome that you should maybe think about building a base. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go to another location that's some hard living, but it sure is fun. And I'll show you that next. Okay, and next I want to talk about an area that is uh, one of the toughest areas in the game. It's called Carno Island. It's no surprise that we're going to talk about this one in a base location video because it's just so utilitarian if you can survive here. Um, there's a lot of places to build. Uh, of course, everybody would think, oh, I'm going to go right in the center and plop my base down and that'll be the best spot ever. That's a good spot to build, don't get me wrong. But I tend to, when I want to build on Carno Island, is I tend to build along the outer edges here where I can have shore access and water access. Golly, look at all that stuff going on. My goodness. But see, that's one of the greatest resources about this island is its dinos that spawn here. You get all your high-level Rexes, high-level Carnos, high-level Scorps, high-level uh, Direwolves, high-level uh, Sabres, high-level RGs. You get a lot of dinos here. And they spawn in pretty good levels too. And they spawn so rapidly that even if you can't find a level that you want, you will eventually. All you have to do is just kill them and they spawn right back. They spawn massive numbers here. So RGs, I mean, you know, everybody wants an RG and they want a high level RG. So max level RGs are easy to get here. Max level Rexes are easy to get here. And there you go. I mean, you got two of your most important dinos in the game right there. This, this place has good resources, um, <clears throat> doesn't really have any rich metal nodes or anything like that, but that's not why you're at a place like this. You're at a place like this because you want high-level dinos um, and it, you want that kind of stuff. You've got high-level supply drops that hit right here. Here's a yellow one. Let's see what it's got in it. Uh, it's got a nice Ascendant saddle in it, so you can see, you know, Ascendant Pariser saddle. That's nothing to sneeze at. Uh, you can see that you could get good drops here as well, so that's very important. Uh, this island also has access to a cave, one of the caves. It's right over here. <clears throat> and one of the artifacts is in this cave right here, so that's cool. Um, one of the things that I thought was interesting was trying to build a land plus water base here and on the official servers you can place four water platforms together and I think that's the maximum you could place. So what I was thinking about doing is I was thinking about placing two in the middle for my living quarters and I'll cover that with uh, ceilings to make a, a floor that I can build off of and then I can put walls to you know whatever I want in there. The first one right here is kind of my taming platform is the idea I kind of had because what I do is I open the doors, let me open them, and I run Rexes right up this ramp and have them drop right in here 
and boom, I've got a Rex trapped. And then I can just close the door and the Rex is inside my little area and it's safe from other dinos attacking it. And you can see I had a little saber come to visit while I was showing you that. But you see how effective it is. I got him trapped and now I could tame him if I wanted. And it's far enough back from the door to where he runs up in here, gets caught, and nothing can really hurt him now, you know. Uh, then I just, you know, I tame right there, and that's an easy way to tame high-level Rexes. Uh, RGs wouldn't really work that well in this because there's no ceiling, but I could quickly remedi remedy that by just placing some ceilings on top. And then I fly it right in, and boom, I'm ready to tame me an RG as well. So this is a very utilitarian setup for taming and living, basically. Uh, so I got my taming set up there. I've got my two living quarter spaces side by side here to give me plenty of room to be able to put all my crafting stuff and all that. I have water access, so I have access for my crops and my food. And then I thought with this last one right here, uh, do what I always want to do and build me a water pen. Uh, you know, I know that this is overkill what I've got going here, and yes, I did spawn all these walls in and all that kind of stuff, but you can see the potential behind something like this. You see, I've got a shark in here right now, and I could wall this off to where he's trapped, and then boom, I've got me a taming rig, and I've got other sharks just itching to get in here and be my, be my friends. Uh, Megalodon level 600, 136. Wow. So yeah, I mean, I've got a nice little water pen set up here. I could do a lot of water dino storage. Uh, just be mindful of how I place them to where it gives me the maximum amount of space. And then I could like wall it off right here to where dino taming and storage is just like right here on this side. And then I live space, you know, and, you know, I might have a few little water dinos in there. This guy got stuck in my living space. Anyway, yeah, this is kind of a really neat idea. I thought I'd kind of play with and see what I could come up with out of that. And I kind of like that configuration right there. That's totally doable on an official server. And you're on an island where you're getting a ton of spawns to choose from. You can just sit here and just scope them out and see which ones you want, you know, type of thing. And, and just pick and choose. Um... Yeah, this is a really good place to be, and this is one of my favorite islands to be on, honestly. I think that base would do me really well on official. Because if I wanted to, I could spread out in the water. Because a lot of people don't really, when they're trying to capture land, they're always trying to pillar off the land itself. And they never really consider the space that's usable on the shore under the water and building up into that as well because you can see you can totally build a lot of unique stuff in the water you just have to know how to do it you know and if you got a platform you can go down from the platform and then inside you can put ceilings to make floors and all kinds of stuff so this is a really neat island just something to think about uh, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you one of my absolute favorite locations. I probably shouldn't show you this because honestly I don't want to have to fight a bunch of people for this location because this is probably where I am going to go right off the bat if I can get it. And we'll look at that right now. So now we're coming upon one of my favorite locations in game to be. Um, as you can see, you've got the red ob over here, you've got the swamp area, and then you've got the start of the redwoods in the redwoods area right here. A lot of people don't like to live in the redwoods because the redwoods can just be intense. There's a lot of stuff going on in the redwoods, and you're getting attacked every time you turn around. You're getting attacked from thylos jumping out of trees, archaeopteryx hitting you from everywhere, stunning you off your mounts. Um, just all kinds of nastiness go on in the redwoods. But if you can get to a place where you can survive, one of the locations where everybody likes to go is like this little lake area right here. This is a pretty place if you're into aesthetics. This is a base location that could be really beautiful. Uh, you have your own little waterfall over here. And you can do lots of things with that. You have some ruined structures to build around in and around. 
um, the pretty water, nice little base spot right here in the middle if you can get it. Uh, but what I like to do is I like to think in utilitarian terms. And for me, one of the most utilitarian places on the map is this. This is Swamp Cave entrance right here. For anybody that's played Ark for a long time and knows, you know, what they're talking about, Swamp Cave is one of the best places to farm for blueprints and chitin and, and experience and just if you got a frog cementing paste and I mean the Swamp Cave is insane. The drops in the Swamp Cave are usually like yellow and red and there's a lot of them. Uh, there are some of the highest percentage quality loot in game drops that are there are in the game and there's also an artifact in there that's needed for a lot of the boss fights so it's a good location to be central to one of the things i like to do is i like to build in the trees and i like to come up with funky treehouse based designs that are located near the swamp cave like this one right here i'm not really sure how this is going to work out on official uh, needless to say, I don't know if you could like place a tree platform like right over the top of the Swamp Cave entrance. But I think these two right here are far enough back to where you can place them near the location and then be able to kind of build, you know, how you want to. Um, and turn up the brightness so you can see a little better. This location is unique because you can place two platforms and they mesh into each other. Now... If this can't be done on the official, I'm not sure. But I know that these two platforms can place at the same level on the server I'm at, and they mesh together, and then you can go around and put some walls around them, build you two above that do the same thing, and then boom, you have a two-tree platform-wide kind of a conical goodness-looking thing that once you get it all built out, it's going to be massive. Uh, then, if you really want to get funky with it, you can bring your walls down to the ground and with ceilings create you another level inside here underneath there. So, as you can see, I've got three huge levels that I can use on this base and I can even take my walls and go up and make more if I want to. Uh, or build ramps out of these and do my walls further out to where I encapsulate more of this ground space type thing. But this is a really unique place to build, I think. It has access to rain, so you can get your crops growing up top here. Um, it has access to, like I said, some water down below. Uh, yeah, the access to one of the the best cave in the game. Honestly, I'm just going to say it. Swamp Cave is the best cave in the game. And, you know, this is just a really nice, pleasing area that's not boring because there may not look like it right now because I killed a bunch of stuff here a minute ago, but there's a lot of animals running around here. So you're constantly going to be challenged. You're not just going to be able to sit back on your laurels and not defend yourself because you're going to have stuff coming at you from all sides here. And you have plenty of room to be able to do whatever you want to do in a unique kind of fashion. You can see I've built walls up from one to the other. And yes, I know this is a lot of resources and I did spawn these walls in. But this can be done on an official. I've done it, so I know. And then once you, you have a project that is going to take you a while, once you get the tree platforms down, you pretty much lock down the space to where nobody can take it from you, and you can just kind of build at your leisure. And then when you finish this stuff, you're like, wow, you know, what a sense of accomplishment I have now that I've created this big honking huge thing beside this awesome cave that I like to go into every day, 10 times a day, to check for really good blueprints like Rex saddles, um, UD saddles, all different kinds of cool stuff, uh, good shotgun blueprints, good everything type of stuff. So, and yeah, there's my neighbor mowing. Sorry about that if you're hearing that. But yeah, this is just <clears throat> one of the places that I like to build. I think this is one of the best base locations in the game. And, you know, if as we're talking, we kind of understand that not everybody has to build on Herbie Island. You know what I mean? Not everybody has to go there. Uh, you can build in other places, too. 
you can do things that are outside the box and in unique areas and not really so meta as far as you know what all the pve kids are doing you can do something different you know uh this is not really pvp type stuff i'll just kind of preface this with that because i'm not really looking at this for good pvp base locations this is kind of like pve surviving you know pve having a good place to live that's utilitarian i can breed a lot of dinos here you know and have some interaction with people because there's going to be lots of people running through this area constantly that's why after i do my note run i'll run right here and try to start getting these platforms uh, built up but anyway, I hope this content helped you kind of think outside the box a little bit and help you look at base locations in a different kind of light. Uh, I would really appreciate it if you would please uh, subscribe to my content so that you could honor my commitment to bring you good content about Ark Survival Ascended and you could join the group and you know be notified whenever we put out more content so you can be involved and comment so that we can talk to you about your ideas and, and interact with the community I'm trying to build. This is the only way I'm going to be able to grow this channel is if you help me and subscribe and, you know, share it around to your friends and, and that type of thing. And I really want to do that because Ark Survival Ascended is going to be something that I'm going to just sink myself into deeply. And I would really love for my content to grow and get better. I'm currently working on trying to, you know, make sure that I'm delivering a high quality product and learning how to use editing software and things like that to where I can do these things for you in a, in a more pleasing manner. And I would appreciate it if you would join with me. So thank you for your time today. I just want to say that I really appreciate you being here and I hope that you'll carry on with me in the future. Thanks.